Okay, so here we're talking about standard 1.1, which is on basic states and probabilities. And we're going to be focusing on, in this presentation, the spin one-half system. So we're doing problem 1.6, which starts off by stating, a beam of spin one-half particles is prepared in the state psi equal to 2 over root 13 times the positive ket in the x direction, plus 3i over root 13 times the negative ket in the x direction. And it's important to note here that this, um, this state is represented using the basis of the spin component in the x direction rather than the z direction. And this will require a little bit more work when we're trying to find the probability as desired in the question. But before we go on to that, we're first going to check that this state is normalized by finding the normalization constant c. Typically these states are normalized prior for us, however it is good to check for so we don't have to do any extra work later on. So basically here we just take the inner product of the state psi with itself and set it equal to 1. And to do this, to get the corresponding bra, we take the Hermitian conjugate, and we get a C star, and we also change the sign on this, this coefficient here, and then when we multiply through, the C star and C become this coefficient C modulus squared, and we get 4 thirteenths plus 9 thirteenths. And the reason we get this is because when we multiply two, um, if we get a bra and a ket that are represented by the same state, um, these two give us, they have an inner product of 1, and the other two, we have this and this. These are, these are orthogonal basis vectors, a brown and ket that are orthogonal, so when we inner product them together, that becomes 0. So these, these factors cancel out when we do our multiplication. But when we add this together, we can note that we can just let, since the phase doesn't have any physical meaning, we can just let the C we can just choose the real portion and we get c equals to 1, implying that this is already normalized as desired. So now that we have that, we want to look at the possible results of a measurement of the spin component in the z direction, sz, and with what probabilities would they occur. And we should note that we already know the possible measurements of the spin up and spin down, but we need to find their respective pro probabilities. And this can be done by noting the important result but the probability of measuring a um, state as it's going out when it's prepared in a state that it's coming in with, it's equal to the inner product of those two modulus squared. And this was this was talked about a lot in the chapter with different with the different Stern Gerlach experiments, and I, I suspect that this is going to be important an important result throughout the remainder of the class. So from here, it's just a calculation for each of the possible states, nothing too crazy. We have to do a clever substitution in this first part, but nothing more than that. So the probability of measuring a spin-up state is equal to the modulus squared of positive bra and a product with the ket of the state psi. And when we go through here, we can just distribute correspondingly and we get this set up as follows. The issue with this is that we're not sure what this, these inner products mean because we don't have any clever tricks like, oh, we have two of the same, so it's one, or we have orthogonal ones, so they're zero. So we have to, we have to basically, we know that this can be, that this, um, these cats here, they can be represented as a linear combination of, um, the basis vectors in the z direction. The spin up, spin down is that are right here. And this is the corresponding representation from the book and what we worked out in class the other day. And once we have that, we can substitute in and then distribute once again. Once we go through all the algebra, we're left with this result here, that we have 2 over root 26 plus 3i over root 26 modulus squared. And our result we did in the complex analysis lecture is that the modulus squared is just equal to that complex number times the complex numbers, um, complex conjugate. And once we have that, it's just a simple, a simple product. And we get that 4 over 26 plus 9 over 26 is equal to 1 half, which is the probability of measuring spin up. And one thing we could note is we know now that since there are exactly two states, um, the other one must also have probability 1 half. But just to verify that, we're going to go through a similar process, just with a little less detail. 
So the probability of measuring spin down is equal to the modulus squared of the negative bra inner product with the um, cat of the psi state. So we just go through similar status here, do the same, same representation of the two cats in the x direction with their um, basis vectors in the z direction. And we're left with this module, this thing modulus squared, and we get one half again. And this actually verifies that we were correct, that there are only going to be two possible states that can come out of this system, namely the spin up and spin down. And now we're going to do the same thing, but basically now we're going to have a different system set up. So if we were to set up one of these stern gerlach experiments, now after sending, now that we have the particles coming out an X analyzer, now we're going to have it go through a Z, another X analyzer, unlike the above, which was a Z analyzer. So we're just going to use an identical approach, and we know that the two possible measurements are the spin up and spin down in the X direction. But to find these probabilities, we just use the same calculation style. So we have the probability of measuring spin up in the x direction is the modulus squared of the spin up bra in the x direction and our product with the, with the state psi cat. And here we are left with this, and we just distribute through. And since now everything is in, is, all the bras and cats are in this, represented by the same basis vectors. We have no clever substitution, and we're just left with 2 over 13 modulus squared. And since this is a real number, it's just this quantity squared, and we get 4 over 13 for our probability. And similarly, for the other state, we can go through the same process, and we get 9 over 13 as our probability. And this verifies that, once again, we were correct. These do sum to 1, which means that there are exactly two possible states for the system. And we get that the probability of measuring spin up in the x direction is 4 over 13, and the probability of measuring spin down in the x direction is 9 over 13. And the final thing we want to do is plot histograms of these predicted measurement results. And here we have two, two diagrams that were inserted in, done from a whiteboard. And for part A, we'll just note that here we have, I can't really highlight over it, but we have the psi state measured at the top. The note that this is what this is for. And we're measuring the z, the z component spin. And we have the up at the top. We have the total probability is going to be 1. So we have that marked off. And we have the um, spin up and spin down here marked with, their, with the corresponding h bar. And both of them are equal to 1 half. And similarly, we have the histogram as followed. And we have 9 over 13 and 4 over 13 for the spin down and spin up, respectively. And But our, x, our x-axis corresponds to the spin, the spin in the x direction. So that is it, and thank you.